Right, John Oaks here with Hankster's Hot Rods, and today uh, for our new inventory, we've got a 1977 Ford Bronco. This is a half cab model here. You can see that by way of not having the uh, the hard top or soft top, but it is a completely enclosed cab on this uh, particular Bronco. As you can see, we've got a real nice orange paint job here. We've got the silver stripes here that run down over the hood and then back the side of the vehicle. So that's a nice little touch to kind of break up that orange a little bit. Um, you can see that we've got the 302 emblems on here on the front fenders. That does signify what is under the hood here too. Now, however, it's a non-original motor, non-numbers matching 302 motor that's in here. Uh, but we'll get a chance to take a look at that a little later. Um, we can see on our Bronco here that we're looking at right now, they've gone ahead, they've modified those wheel wells just slightly, and they've added these black fender flares here. So again, a real nice touch on there again to break up that orange paint. And that kind of transitions you down to these tires and wheels that they have on here. Now these are 15 inch wheels, Mickey Thompson's, they call these the side biter wheel and uh, they're actually a black satin finish on here. So a real nice looking wheel for this particular vehicle. And then on those, they have those wrapped in BF Goodrich All-Terrain TA KO2. Uh, uh, they're 31, 10.5, uh, R15 LT tires on all four corners. And again, you can see the tread on there in our video and in all of our photos. Tread is practically brand new on all of these tires. So again, a real good look for our vehicle here. Again, you can see Bronco emblems on the back side of the front fender. All steel here too. The only thing that's not steel is going to be this little hood scoop that's up here on the top of the hood here. So again, everything's in real nice shape, good and solid. You can look at our door gaps here and see how well these doors fit on this particular vehicle. Even our hinges back here, a lot of times you'll see these that they're a little bit rusty. These are not painted up orange, the same as the rest of the vehicle. They look great. We've got mirrors on this thing too, on both sides, both driver and passenger side. And you can see our little vent window here too on both sides. You can see all the trim work around there, not too bad. They have it painted up black there to kind of set it off from the vehicle. The glass itself is in real good condition. I don't see any cracks or chips in that glass. Same thing with the windshield too, it's in real nice shape. Of course, we have the framework around the windshield too, that bright work, the molding here around it. Uh, and again, it's not in too bad a condition. Again, it's showing a little bit of its age there. Uh, but again, it's still in really good shape there for the vehicle. Again, it's a 1977 Bronco that we're talking about here. As we come back to the door, we're just going to open this up, take a quick peek. You can see that the inside of the door here, same orange as what's on the exterior of our car. Uh, we've got the two-tone panels in here, silver door panels. These are mounted in with your armrest here, a gray armrest. And that armrest is in really good shape too. It doesn't have any cracks or tears in it. Black bucket seats. Uh, again, we've got the silver painted dash, a padded dash in there with uh, fact, some factory instrumentation as well as aftermarket stuff too. And again, we'll go more in depth with the interior as we get to that point. We'll close that door, it shuts up real nice there. The drip rails around the top of the cab here are all in good shape too. Nice and straight, painted the same color as the vehicle. Uh, our half cab model here for the bed, they have this nicely fitted uh, tonneau cover here on here. It snaps in place the whole way around, even across the back tailgate here. It's in real nice shape. Uh, again, no tears, it's got bows in it here so that if you do have it outside and you would get any water or anything, it's gonna go ahead and uh, roll right off of the actual tonneau cover there. Again, we've got dual fuel tanks on this. Um, we'll see that from the underside as well, but you got the dual uh, fuel necks here. Uh, again, front tank, rear tank. The front tank on this thing is all brand new. Tank, the hoses, the vent tube, all of that stuff, all new. And again, you see our fender flares here that they did on the back fenders as well. Our tires and wheels in that we just mentioned. And that brings us to the rear of the vehicle. Uh, again, our, our, all of our marker lights, all of the lenses and all of our taillights are in all good shape too on this. 
There are no cracks or chips or anything like that. And all of the bright work is polished up real nice on our vehicle. So all of that, none of it's going to be an issue. All right, now that we're around the back side of our 77 Ford Bronco here, we'll take a look at all the things that we usually take a look at, starting with our rear glass. Now our rear glass here in this vehicle, it's got a slight tint to it. It's got the black rubberized molding that goes around here. So of course, that black molding is in excellent shape. Our window's in really nice shape too. There's no cracks or chips in it either. Now again, I mentioned our tonneau cover here snaps across the top of our tailgate. Now I've already gone ahead and unsnapped that for video purposes because we're going to go ahead and open our tailgate just so you can see inside the bed here real quick. Um, so again, I've already done that. We're going to go ahead and uh, use our handle here and latch that. And go ahead and lower our tailgate just real quick to take a look. Now you can see they've done the bed liner on the tailgate as well as the floor of the bed in here. Um, your, your fender wells and your, the sides of the bed, of course that's all painted. No real need to go ahead and do any kind of bed liner in here again. Probably not going to be transporting too much in here. Again, it's a small bed. Um, not really meant for that, but I guess you could if you ever wanted to. But again, everything's done real nice on the inside of this. You can see your hinges are all in good shape and all intact there. They do work as they should. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put our tailgate back up again. Sorry about that. Just had to make sure our tonneau cover wasn't in between there. So again, all steel tailgate here. No problems whatsoever. No areas of rust to be concerned with back here either. Um, of course, your uh, latch does work there. Your tail lights, the lenses are in good shape. The bright work around your tail lights, those are polished up real nice. Got the correct mounting screws in there too. Now the other change that they've done on this is they've changed out the stock bumper. They've gone ahead and added this custom one that somebody built for it. Again, it's bolted on. It's a good heavy duty bumper here, welded up real nice. You can see they've got the, um, the provisions here that if you wanted to put say like toe shackles on it or anything like that, you could go ahead and do that. You see your trailer hitch receiver right here too. That's welded into the bumper. Real nice job with that. And you can see our exhaust here where it comes up. You've got those nice chrome tips here, the slash cut exhaust tips to give it a decent look out the rear of the vehicle. All right, now standing here at the back corner on the passenger side here, I'm going to go ahead and look up this side of our vehicle. I did the same thing on the other side, just didn't mention it on the video. But again, looking down the sides of this vehicle, everything is nice and straight all in line with everything else. Uh, so your rear quarter panels to the door to the front fender are all lined up very nicely. Your elevations, there's no deviation whatsoever between your door, fender, and quarter panel on this vehicle. Metal's nice and straight. Our stripes here that I mentioned before, these are all painted on uh, and then probably cleared over top. So again, they've done a real nice job of keeping those lines nice and straight and crisp on the paint job on this vehicle. Again, our side marker lights, the bezels and everything are all in great shape on this. Wheels and tires are in good shape too, as we mentioned. The black fender flares on both the front and rear of the vehicle. So we'll come up here to our door next. We'll check our gaps out again on this door now. So the back side versus the front side, not too bad on this vehicle. We'll open us up, take a look on the inside there again. The orange, same as the exterior, comes all the way into the inside of the vehicle. They've two-toned it in here with the orange, some silver in there on the dash and door panels, and then of course black bucket seats up front. So everything looks good and we'll see that here in just a little bit in more in depth. Uh, as far as your seals and weather stripping, everything's in good shape on both sides. There's no cracks or tears in any of that looks good. It's going to seal up real nice from the outside elements. Uh, so again, it's going to make you a real nice vehicle. Uh, even your, uh, your thresholds down here along the bottom, those are in good shape and painted the same orange as the rest of the vehicle. So we'll close that. That side closes up nice. Again, I've already mentioned we've got the mirrors on both sides. The finish on the mirrors are real nice. 
your arms and the mounting hardware, again, all real nice for this vehicle. Your wing window, again, in good shape here. No cracks, no chips. Looks to be just slightly tinted with the black trim around there. Uh, then our front fender, again, with the Bronco emblems on the back side. Our fender flares, and then the 302 emblems on the front side here of the front fender. All right, finally here at the front of our 77 Bronco here. You can see, again, all steel everything here on this car except for this fiberglass hood scoop that's on top of our uh, hood here. And again, they've done this. It's actually a functional scoop because they've actually cut the hood out underneath to allow the air cleaner to stick up through so you can get more air, better airflow back into your air cleaner to help that engine breathe. Um, now again, this is steel. Our gaps around this hood are real good side to side. Elevations aren't too bad either. Again, these are older, you know, these Broncos, the, the panels never really lined up really great anyways to begin with, but this one's not real bad. It's actually pretty good uh, compared to most. We've already mentioned our windshield and the condition that it's in. Our front grille, you can see it's been color matched, the same color as the rest of the vehicle. Real nice orange. Our headlights, just your traditional sealed beam units here. So your high and low beam is all housed in one unit here. The bezels around the headlights, you can see those are nicely polished up there. All the correct screws holding those in. Our parking light lenses here, those are in great shape. There's no cracks or chips in any of those. Uh, and those have the correct mounting screws in there. Again, you can see they've matched up the rear bumper to the front bumper. A custom heavy duty steel bumper that they built. It's got this big push bar here in the front. Again, that's twofold. It's going to be, you know, suit its purpose there when you're going through the trails if that's what you use this vehicle for um, to help protect that front grill from any, any brush or debris that you might come in contact. And we've got a Polaris winch. Um, so that's all hooked up, ready to go for you. Um, I don't know, I don't think that there's like a remote for this. But they do have the switch for it right out here, so it's real easy access for you to actually utilize that winch. Again, you can see on our front bumper here, they've welded in the provisions for your shackles here. So if you would happen to need a tow or need to pull somebody out from somewhere, you've got those that you can hook a, a chain or a strap to in, in an emergency situation. Uh, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and open our hood up. And we'll do that right now. And we'll talk about the engine that we have underneath here. Now, as you can see on this one, most of these you have to raise up manually. You've got the, uh, the hood prop rod in here then. This one, you don't have it. You actually have the hydraulic lift cylinders back there, which actually help tremendously on a vehicle like this to go ahead and open that hood and it keeps it up in the air for you. Now as far as the engine goes here, engine bay itself, it's all painted orange, same as the exterior of the vehicle. But as far as the engine goes, we do know that even though the emblems signify 302, um, that's what we have. It's just not the original uh, 302, I believe. Whenever we run the numbers on this, it comes out to be like a, a 1989 302, I think is what it is. Uh, but again, they've kept kind of with the theme of the vehicle. They went with a 302. We've got a Holley uh, dual feed, or no, that's a single feed carburetor. Uh, so Holley single feed four barrel with an electric choke. This does have a, uh, an electric fuel pump on it as well. I believe this is a 600 CFM carburetor too, which is again is plenty of carburetor for a 302 engine. You got kind of along the lines of a stock style distributor here, um, stock style coil in this vehicle as well. Um, now they did go ahead, it looks like they've got some updated plug wires in here, uh, and these are probably, uh, probably a seven millimeter wire, um, but again, they're upgraded wires, they're not stock. Um, so they're going to help deliver a little better um, spark to the engine. Um, we've got uh, cast aluminum valve covers. We've got an aluminum uh, intake on this thing too. Chrome air cleaner. Now this, this vehicle here has got power brakes on it. 
Uh, also, it is a power steering vehicle too. So it's going to drive, brake, and all that stuff very easily and effortlessly. Uh, stock style radiator in here. Uh, and it looks like we've got a, uh, just trying to look here, probably a six or a seven blade flex fan in there. Um, so again, the flex fans are really good because again, they're going to provide the cooling you need when you're driving at low RPM. Whenever you speed up, those fan blades are going to go ahead and flatten out a little bit and uh, cut down on your uh, resistance there um, so that your uh, water pump is a lot more efficient too. Um, other than that, uh, looks like we've got a fairly new battery in here, uh, probably brand new because we usually go through and check all that stuff and it looks brand new in here. Um, we got the uh, battery disconnect in there too. Um, so really that's about it uh, other than uh, uh, long tube headers. Um, what we have behind this engine then is an automatic transmission. It's the C4. Again, according to the VIN plate after we decode everything, um, this originally would have come with a C4 transmission in it. Um, the rear ends are both uh, limited slip differentials, 9-inch Ford on the back with a uh, 2.50 gear ratio according to the VIN plate as well. So uh, everything looks good here that we've gone over thus far. All right, now that we're inside of our 77 Bronco half cab, not a whole lot to go through as far as interior goes on one of these, but you can see we've got the two-tone, or I guess you could call it maybe a three-tone interior. So you've got the orange on the door panels along with the silver inserts there in the middle of the doors. You can also see the gray armrests there that kind of match up with the silver. And again, the armrests aren't in bad shape. Uh, there's no splits or cracks or tears in them. Uh, and you can see a little bit of just average wear and tear on them, but uh, nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, as we continue on into the dash here, you can see that silver's on the dash. This is a padded dash and it is the factory dash. And the pad on top is in great shape. There's no cracks or tears in that either. As far as the steering wheel and steering column, these are stock units here. Um, and this looks to be like an older uh, like wood grain wheel. It's got the, you know, the original wear and tear on it and it actually looks really cool. They've got the uh, steering wheel and the column itself all painted black to kind of go hand in hand with the interior here. Uh, as far as the uh, gauges and so forth, we do have the factory gauge over there to the left of the column. Uh, now that gauge is going to be your 100 mile an hour speedometer. Uh, it's also going to have your fuel gauge, water temperature, oil pressure, and probably your alternator gauge over there from uh, what usually is on those. Um, but however, they have gone ahead and they've added a few aftermarket gauges here. They have a nice uh, built-in SunPro gauge panel here, um, which does contain your oil pressure, your water temperature, and your voltmeter for your battery. So I'm only assuming that by having these gauges in here, maybe the factory ones either one don't work or they may not be real accurate so they've elected to update the gauges in it so you get a more accurate reading uh, other than that as far as your other controls in here you've got the factory heater controls and wiper controls and light switches um, so all of that's just factory stuff now again your dash is in really good shape your glove box door here opens up real nice the uh, socket for your custom wheel lugs that are on these wheels are inside uh, this glove box here too. And if you ever wonder where the VIN plate is and the uh, uh, your you know codes and so forth for the vehicle, on most of these Broncos they're going to be mounted inside the glove box lid. So that is exactly where ours is. So it is in the correct spot. Now our vehicle it is a four wheel drive. Obviously we've got the transfer case underneath both rear ends limited slip like I said so you've got your stock shifter here for your transfer case uh, going ahead and update it again with an automatic transmission being the C4 here we've got a B&M shifter in here on the floor so uh, again that's going to work real good with that C4 transmission as far as the carpeting goes though, carpeting looks pretty good uh, just average wear and tear but I don't see any holes rips or tears um, so again it's in good condition bucket seats here in the front um, and those are in great shape the upholstery on those um, I would assume it's all vinyl but it's in really good shape 
There's no rips or tears in any of that. Front seat belts on here too. As far as your headliner goes, it's all metal, but it's all painted the same orange as the rest of your uh, vehicle outside and in. Um, and then the one thing that I'm not 100% sure of what they all are, uh, there is a little panel right underneath the dash um, that's got a couple toggle switches on. One I do know for certain is the fuel pump. So you can shut the fuel pump on and off manually. If you leave it in the on position though, it comes on with the key. So it's just a safety feature um, if you ever run into a situation where you've got the vehicle running and you can't for some reason get the key off. You can just reach down and flip the toggle switch and it will shut the fuel supply off. Other than that, um, I'm only assuming uh, one of them, I would think, is probably for your tank selector, uh, if I had to take a guess. Because you've got to be able to switch from one tank to the other one if you empty one out. So I, I'd say probably one of them is that, but I'm not 100% sure what the other one is. Um, so I, I won't lie, I just don't know. Um, but other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, we've got our sun visors here. They are done in gray. And as you can see, they stay down. You push them back up, they stay up. So they're nice and tight in here. All right, now that we have our 1977 Ford Bronco up on the lift here, as always, we're going to go through everything here that we see on the underside, let you know what we do have under here, and then you can take a look and see how well a condition everything is here. So, again, we'll start up front here, and we'll talk about uh, suspension, steering, uh, you know, all that information there. So, as far as the suspension goes, all stock stuff here. Um, of course, we do have some nice coils here. It's probably got a slight lift on it. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe a two inch uh, suspension possibly. Um, I don't see anything on the body. So uh, again, suspension is probably what you have in two inch lift on that. Um, as you can see right here, we have a front sway bar on this vehicle. So that's gonna make it handle a lot better. Um, you do have the steering stabilizer up front here. And then also all of your stock steering components, your drag link, center link, um, all your tie rods. And of course, all your tie rods are in really good shape. Ball joints are in good shape. Again, rubber dust boots are all intact on everything here. So again, that's going to keep the grease in, keep dirt and debris out. Um, as far as the rest of the suspension goes, we've got this uh, limited slip differential here up front. Uh, again, all your sway bar bushings are good. Uh, so all of that stuff, like I said, spindles also, those are all in good shape. All of your articulating components in really good condition. Um, as far as the steering, like I said, we've already gone over tie rods, ball joints, so forth like that. We've got front disc brakes on this vehicle, rear drums on it. Again, just all stock components, so it's things that are going to be easy for you to get uh, replacement parts for if you would ever need them. As far as uh, tires go, uh, wheels and tires, front and back, all matching on this vehicle. Um, we've got 15 inch wheels. Um, these are Mickey Thompson. Um, they are called the Side Biter. Um, they are satin black finish, aluminum wheels. We've got BF Goodrich all-terrain uh, TA tires on here. Size is 31 by 10 and a half uh, R15 LTs. So, and again, all the tread is in excellent condition on this Bronco. So those are all in nice condition. Uh, I said already, we've got limited slip differential. Our drive shaft, the front shaft is in real good shape. It's balanced, transfer case. Uh, and then the rear drive shaft also, and it's balanced as well. So it's going to keep your drive train running nice and smooth here. Now, as far as the rear differential goes, this is a nine inch Ford rear limited slip. And according to the build tag on this, this would be uh, a 2.50 gear ratio on your rear differential. Uh, again, that's if that's the factory differential that's in there. Um, as far as the rest of the drive line goes, um, we've got uh, we do know that we've got a non-original motor. This is a 302 cubic inch small block Ford motor. We've got an automatic transmission. This is the C4 automatic transmission. And also, according to the build tag on this, it would have came with the C4 automatic transmission. Um, 
again, your transfer case, your transmission, um, even the motor here, things I do when I'm underneath here is I look for any leaks too, and I don't see anything there. Everything looks real dry around the pans, around any of the lines, um, and also the transfer case, and uh, you know your differentials. Uh, like I said, everything like that is all dry. As far as exhaust system, we've got long tube headers on this, dual exhaust, we've got dual turbo style mufflers, uh, and then of course tailpipes that exit out the rear of the vehicle with a set of uh, slash cut chrome exhaust tips on there as well. Uh, and then as far as our floors go, as I look up at the floors, uh, they look really good on this particular vehicle. Um, all stock floor pans, uh, you know, the factory stamped floors, you can see all the lines. All of the bracing is all intact on this. We even got uh, the e-brake, it's all hooked up. So you've got your front cables, intermediates, rear cables, and all linkages in between that make that work. Those are in there. Um, this has been upgraded to an electric fuel pump also. And we do have dual fuel tanks on this as well. Now the side tank up here, this is all brand new stuff. So brand new tank fill neck, vent tube, all of that stuff, sending unit, that's all new stuff in that front tank. Again, you'll see the dual fuel uh, fill necks uh, on the exterior of the vehicle there to fill each one. So, uh, with that said, I mean, that's pretty much for underneath our Bronco here.